Hello, my name is Ed Fessler, and this is my 2018 Tesla Model 3 that I got uh, at, towards the end of 2018. So I've had it for about four and a half years, and I just uh, turned over 100,000 miles. Woohoo! And I thought I'd make a quick video just to uh, you know go over a few things, just for people who uh, want to know or are curious about the Model 3 or thinking about getting one. So uh, first of all, uh, I, I do want to say every time I've gotten in this car and wanted to go somewhere, um, it has always gotten me from point A to point B. Now, uh, that may seem kind of trivial or, uh, yeah, we, we kind of expect it, but I uh, just want to point out that even though, you know, you buy a new car, uh, that is not always necessarily the case. I know people that have bought a car and it really doesn't get them from point A to point B every time. So uh, I just thought that was uh, important to point out. Uh, this one has always done that and, uh, you know, that's a good thing. So the next big question that most people will have is, what is the battery range now after 100,000 miles? So when I got this car new, um, charged it up to 100% and it had 309 miles of battery range. Um, I think some of the newer models have better range, but that's what this one was uh, when I got it new. Uh, the last trip I took, I charged it to 100% uh, and it showed 290 miles. So I think that's doing pretty good. That's about 94% of what it had when it was new. Uh, so that's pretty good. Um, you know, if it's uh, 290 miles or 280 miles or 270 miles, you know, is it really that big of a difference? Um, you know, I think there's, a, there's another question here that is kind of bigger than what is exactly the range? Why are people so concerned about the range? And that is because they're trying to use that as an indicator of how long the battery will last, which basically is an indicator of how long the car will last. Um, so that's a big question. I think Elon Musk addressed it at one point uh, with the Model 3 here, and I think he estimated it. You'd probably get 350, uh, no, 300 to 450,000 miles um, on the battery, uh, which is you know a, a big expense of the car. So you know that's pretty good. I'm hoping it does last that long. Um, but, you know, there's, a, there's another thing to consider here that's, that's a little different than an internal combustion engine car. Uh, with an internal combustion engine car or an ICE car, you pretty much know when it's done. Um, you know, something big is going to break and the expense is going to be more than the value of the car. Um, you know, typically with an ICE car, it's going to be the engine's going to go out or the transmission's going to go out, um, something like that. And then you're going to be like, well, you know, I, it's not worth uh, that big expense. Uh, with an electric car, I think it's going to be a little different. You know, I mean, the, the battery is going to degrade, sure. And when it degrades too much, uh, you're going to say, okay, I've either got to replace the battery or I've got to, uh, you know, give up on the car and get another one. Uh, but, you know, it's not going to be undrivable, most likely. So the question is, you know, if it gets down to 200 miles of range, is that still good? Well, for most people, that probably is. What if it gets down to, you know, 50% of the original range, 150 miles? You know, that might be fine too. What if it even gets down to 70 or 75 miles? Um, you know, you can't take it on trips with that. But if you have another car in the family that you take on trips, that might be fine for going in town and, and doing a lot of things. So I think that, you know, even defining uh, when the battery is done is going to be a little different uh, than, a, than, you know, your typical car. Um, so, but, you know, at that point, you know, when it becomes, you know, when does it become not useful is basically what it is. I had a weed eater, uh, not a weed eater, but uh, a battery pack that I used in a weed eater and a drill and so on and so on. I used it for years and years and years and it was getting really weak and I put it in my weed eater and I can only go halfway around the house. But, you know, that was okay with me. You know, I, I did halfway around the house then I put on the charger and the next day I did the rest. Um, and, you know, and eventually uh, I was using it in my drill and I was trying to do a specific task and, and it finally just wouldn't even do that little task that I wanted to do. And I was like, okay, now it's done. I'm going to buy a new battery for it. Uh, so I think that'll be similar to uh, maybe what the car is going to be like. You know, it's going to, you know, it, it's still useful. It's still doing most, you know, maybe 80% of what I want it to do. And then, you know, once it gets to a certain point, um, then uh, we either have to, like a gas car that has an engine go out, you have to say, okay, well, what does a battery cost? Uh, what is the car worth? Is it worth uh, maybe just replacing the car or not? And, you know, even the battery cost is going to be a little difficult to tell 
you know, to forecast because you don't know when it's going to go out. You don't know when you're going to be buying one and you really don't know what the price is going to be at that time. Uh, hopefully battery costs go down and down and down and hopefully it won't be that expensive. So we'll see how that goes. But for right now, 94% of uh, original battery capacity is pretty good. Now the next thing is charging on the car. Uh, most people charge at their home uh, for the electric cars, except for, you know, if you go on a long trip, you'll use superchargers. Uh, very easy to use uh, the superchargers on a long trip. Just go in the car, say where you want to go, maps out the, uh, the route and shows you what superchargers you're going to use and how long you're going to be at each one to charge. So it works out really well um, and is really quite good. It's a, it's a really good trip car as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, I have solar on my house, so typically I haven't really paid for home charging uh, because I'm, you know, I'm using solar off my house to do so. And there's also, you know, other free charging around. You can get, uh, you can get different apps that will, uh, you know, point you to free chargers around the city. And uh, I go to those fairly frequently and, uh, you know, go to the coffee shop, a restaurant, maybe a little shopping, plug in my car get some range, you know, it really, it's really a kind of a good perk. Uh, so even if I didn't have solar, uh, you know, the charging costs would be quite low. Um, as far as lifetime uh, kilowatts, uh, watts per mile uh, on the car, I've gotten about, uh, for my lifetime of the car is about 225 watts per mile. So what that equates to is about, uh, for one kilowatt, I can go about 4.4 miles. Now, if you look up on the internet or look at the specs of the car, that's gonna be a lot better efficiency than most places are going to show. And there's reasons for that. Um, one is, I just don't drive the car super fast. Um, you know, I, I decided a long time ago that I'm not in a hurry and uh, I take my time getting places and I enjoy the ride and it's a very enjoyable car to drive. Uh, you know, and sometimes I give, I goose it a little bit and uh, occasionally I still get the, uh, the sports car, uh, you know, come up beside me and rev their engine and, uh, you know, well, I goose it a little bit with them and, you know, it's, it's fun. Uh, you know, unfortunately I can't uh, rev my engine. Uh, maybe Elon Musk can, can uh, put a little uh, uh, rev engine on the car. This is the older car. It doesn't have the external speaker. I think the new ones do, so that may be possible there. Um, but also, you know, and sometimes I even go under the speed limit, like uh, on the interstate at 70 miles an hour. A lot of times I go 65. Um, much more efficient. Um, I also, you know, keep my tires inflated, you know, at a good pressure. Um, you know, if you look in your door jam, you'll see a recommended pressure for the car. If you look in this car, it says uh, 42 pounds. Uh, you can also look on the tires to get an idea. Uh, it has a maximum pressure. I think that's for, you know, like a maximum load on the car if you load it down with people and stuff. I think the maximum pressure with these tires, which are pretty much uh, uh, the same as the original tires, is 51 pounds. Um, on my original set of tires, I actually kept it at about 50 pounds for quite a while, but I did find that that kind of uh, wore the center of the tire just a little bit faster than the edges. So, uh, so I've backed off uh, of that with this set. This is another set of tires and uh, I keep it, you know, between the 42 and 50. Uh, and I'm not recommending that anybody else, you know, do a specific pressure. That's something you should research yourself and decide what you're comfortable with. But, but uh, you know, I, I always make sure that the pressure in the tires is good, uh, which to leads to higher efficiency. So at 10 cents to 4.4 miles, um, you know, you can do a little math here. So for a dollar, I can go 44 miles. Um, so uh, you can compare that to any other electric or ICE car that you like and just compare the efficiency and how much it costs to drive. Um, incidentally, on the tires, uh, you know, when I first got the car, uh, you know, I waited a long time for it. And, uh, you know, of course, I was excited to get it. And, uh, you know, I would, you know, everybody wanted to drive in it. So I took a lot of people for drives. And of course, you know, I was always like, are you ready? And then, you know, you goose it all the way to the floor and it has the, the good acceleration. And uh, everybody's like, ooh, you know, and of course that's fun. Of course, I was doing that quite a bit, you know, with all my different friends and relatives and stuff that wanted to ride on it. And, you know, it wasn't squealing tires. It just, it just goes. And I thought, well, you know, that's, that's all good and everything. And, 
it, it didn't really occur to me that I'm really wearing the tires down kind of quickly. It, you know, it's not squealing tires, so I thought, no big deal. Well, you know, I, I wore down the first two thirty seconds of an inch of the tires pretty quickly. Uh, so <laughs> I kind of backed off that after a while. I'll still goose it sometimes, but uh, not nearly as much as I used to because I don't like to wear the tires out too much prematurely. So let's talk about maintenance next. Um, I've had a number of things uh, fixed on this car under warranty. Uh, the first thing, uh, first thing when I first got the car, I did notice that it didn't have the uh, little, there's a little dual motor emblem on the back of it. Uh, you know, this is not really maintenance, but uh, you know, I was just so excited to get the car. I, you know, I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't too worried about that emblem, but as the months went by, I thought, you know, I kind of would like to have the dual motor emblem on the back. So I called up Tesla and they said, yeah, it's supposed to have one. And I said, well, you know, could you send me one? I'll, I'll put it on. And they said, well, no, we can't send you one, but we can send out a mobile technician and they can put one on for you, <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny because, you know, I, I said, you know, I live way out in the boonies. You're going to send somebody way out here just to put a little, you know, sticker emblem on the car. Um, you know, if you want to come out and do that, that's fine, but I'm perfectly willing to do it myself. Uh, so they actually sent a mobile technician out and, uh, you know, he came out with the emblem and I had the car nice and clean. And of course he's got, you know, a, uh, a template, you know, that they put right on there to get it in the exact right spot. Uh, I guess they didn't trust me to put it in the right spot. Uh, you know, wasn't sure about my mechanical abilities, I assume. Uh, so, uh, I thought that was kind of funny, but you know, for maintenance, uh, you know, one of the great things about Tesla is that they do have a mobile service. I've had a few things that needed to be addressed and most of the time they came to my home or my work and I didn't really, it was no inconvenience whatsoever. So uh, a couple of other things that uh, they ended up, uh, one time uh, they came to my work and I had some condensation in one of the rear taillights, uh, which can happen with pretty much any car. So, uh, so they came to my work and, and fixed that. And uh, also uh, there was a pump on the lumbar support of the driver's side seat that uh, was not operating. So they, they came and fixed that. I believe that was to my home. They, uh, they replaced the trunk wiring harness. Apparently when you open it and close it quite a number of times, uh, maybe the wires weren't quite right. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I was having some problems with the, uh, with the rear camera, I think. Um, and it was kicking autopilot out occasionally. So, uh, you know, it took them a little while to kind of figure that out, uh, but the wiring harness was replaced for free and I did have to, uh, I believe I brought that to a service center to have that done. There were a few other things uh, that, uh, you know, just a couple things that of course were not under warranty. The only things really, which wasn't really wasn't much, was I uh, replaced the tires. Uh, of course, I think I did that at like about 66,000 miles. Um, and then also I bought a new cabin air filter for it. Uh, but really that's the only money I've spent on it. Now, of course, this car gets software updates from time to time. Uh, obviously when it was newer, uh, updates came quicker um, and you got a lot, a lot of new features, uh, a whole lot of new features. Uh, so there was a place where you could set the uh, software update to standard or advanced. So I always had it set to advanced because, you know, I wanted the latest and greatest things they were talking about quickly. Um, so, you know, that's worked out really well. Uh, I think um, for the software updates, it's, it's a really good thing. Occasionally they change the screen layout or, or where things are, um, which can be a little annoying, but really the great thing about it is if you get in this car or you get into a new Model 3, uh, even though they change some things, you're like, oh crap, where's the tire pressure that I can normally see going down the road? I got to find it. Um, you know, that is a little annoying, but the thing is with the newer cars now, since, you know, they keep the software the same here as in the newer cars, you can jump in an old car or in a new car. I can jump in a new car and the screen layout's the same. The controls are the same. The options are the same. So that really makes it really quite nice. Uh, for the software updates. One of the negatives for the advanced software updates is I did have a little bit of trouble occasionally that the autopilot uh, would not function or would kick out a couple times. It did that on a long trip about halfway home once, which was really annoying. I actually had to drive the car myself 
uh, oh, terrible, right? Um, so, but uh, but that didn't work, and then the uh, cruise control didn't work either, the adaptive cruise control. So I was really irritated at the time, but uh, I think at that point the wiring harness might have been causing a little bit of a problem, and and uh, maybe uh, the uh, the software update would uh, fix that. Um, you know, when a new software update came down and it kind of reset everything. Uh, but that was a little annoying. Uh, you know, a couple things like that. I've had, you know, some little things. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, I ended up s switching my software updates to standard instead of advanced just because I decided that, you know, if there was a software glitch, uh, I'd rather somebody else kind of get that at this point. There's, there's less software updates and, uh, you know, you get a new feature every once in a while, but there's not as many of them. So I'm willing to wait for it and uh, just get the little more tried and true version of the software. Now the center screen for the control of the car, uh, you know, when it first uh, was displayed, when the Model 3 was first displayed, people were thinking, oh, there must be a heads-up display because there's just a screen, there's nothing else. And, you know, it was new and weird and different. Uh, there wasn't a heads-up display, but, uh, but you know, Elon said that, uh, you know, that screen is really going to be all you need and, and you'll love it. And I do. I really like that screen and just all, almost all the controls are on the screen. Um, you know, everything's laid out pretty well, and uh, you know, kind of once you get familiar with it, uh, yeah, everything goes really smoothly. Um, I remember getting in, you know, some rental cars before, uh, like an SUV that I had to drive around, and and it had a center screen, and it had buttons around the center screen, and it had buttons below and controls below, and and there's knobs and buttons, and and there's on the steering column and. And on the side, and on, I mean, there, it was just everywhere. Uh, there were screens and buttons everywhere. And, you know, in any car, you've got to kind of learn, okay, where is everything? But with that one, it just, you know, with the way you know, a lot of the newer cars are today uh, that have things scattered around, I'm always wondering, is it on the screen or is it a button somewhere else? I can't remember. Uh, so it's really... You know, I really think that the Tesla's way of doing things and the way it's laid out is just much simpler and much better uh, than when you have this myriad of controls everywhere um, on some of these uh, legacy cars. And back to the autopilot uh, on the interstate, you know, I, I really love that feature of autopilot. Uh, it just makes trips so much easier and so much less tiresome. Um, you know, you just, uh, you know, start autopilot and it goes down the road and you can look around and make sure everything's okay it's sort of like you know it works pretty well you know it's not perfect but it's really good and i equate it to uh like if you're in the car with a teenage driver and you know you're going to be going down the interstate and the teenage driver has some decent experience but they're not perfect and you'll sit in the in the passenger seat maybe if they're doing it and you're watching around and just making sure everything's okay and most of the time they do great, but occasionally you're like, no, 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 don't do that, you know, and you take control and you kind of do something else. And some of it is just a lot of times preference, you know, like, uh, you know, sometimes it'll change lanes, you know, the car seems to want to change to the middle lane going down the interstate. Well, since I drive slower than most people on the interstate, um, you know, I don't necessarily want to change lanes. Uh, sometimes it'll even change to the faster lane, or at least it used to. Uh, I haven't noticed that recently, but it's like I'm going 65 miles an hour on interstate uh, that the speed limit 70. I do not want to go in the fast lane. And I think it does that sometimes for ramps coming up. So it'll see a ramp where there'll be a merge lane and it'll, it'll you know, move me over so that anybody merging uh, will uh, have a free lane to get in. But, you know, when there's cars coming down, you know, and uh, they're going, what's this guy doing in the fast lane? Uh, I always had mine set so, so that uh, it did not change lanes without my permission. So, and that's just a personal preference uh, that I set. But overall, autopilot's great. Um, you know, they used to have a, uh, an issue with what they call phantom braking, uh, where it would just kind of break for no reason. And if you had somebody behind you, they would think you were a crazy driver. Um, I have not noticed that as much lately. Um, that really hasn't happened to me. Uh, much anymore, although I have uh, had one or two people say that uh, it's happened to them, but I think it's definitely much less frequent, uh, frequent and uh, I think they're maybe getting a little bit of a control on that. So 
overall, autopilot's awesome and uh, love it. Uh, I can do a long trip much, much easier than I could before. So one of the other benefits of the car I just want to point out is uh, that, you know, whenever you leave in the morning, you know, you always kind of have this full tank, or I charged it 80, 90 percent is what they recommend. So I've got like 250 miles of range uh, when I leave. So, you know, it's really great that uh, that can be done and you've got a lot of range. I don't have to stop for gas. Um, you know, even in the pandemic, you know, everybody was like, oh, there's germs on the on the pump. Well, you know, not for me. I didn't have to stop at the pump. Um, so, you know, that's a that's a really great thing that uh, no more gas station stops. You don't have to plan for that. You don't have to take time out for that. And, uh, you know, charging at home super easy. I just pull in, plug in, takes me two seconds and uh, you're ready to go. And and. You know, and I drive quite a few miles. You know, I, I drive probably close to 20, 25,000 miles a year because uh, I live out from the city a little bit. And it seemed like, you know, people would call me and they're like, where are you? And I'm like, um, I'm at the dealership getting an oil change, you know, with my, my old gas car. It seems like every two months I had to make an appointment or go in to get an oil change and I'm sitting there and I'm waiting and, and this, that and the other and, you know, it was just a, a big time waster, and I don't do that anymore. Uh, it's not an issue. I don't go to the gas station. I don't get oil changes. Uh, you know, mobile service takes care of me if I if I do need something. So it's really uh, just a great experience, uh, a lot different than um, what w it was like with my uh, old gas car. And uh, you know, it's been a really great car. Um, it's fun to drive. It's quiet. I love the quiet. You know, when I was young, you know, you want to, sometimes you want to, you want to hear the engine, room, room, and you want this specific sound. You know, the older I get, the, the more I like quiet and I like peaceful. So, uh, you know, that's just me. You know, maybe somebody will miss the, the sound of the engine, but, uh, but uh, not me. I, I like just the way it is. And uh, so that's my, my video. Um, everything's uh, good. Uh, it's holding up well. Uh, it still looks great as you can see and um, I'm looking forward to uh, driving it and uh, you know seeing how many miles I get you know I am kind of curious but I hope I don't find out how many miles it gets before it dies for a really 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 long time.